de Jama Garnier, a black Creole fiddler. I don't think there's a racial divide between the musicians, definitely not. It may be um, between club owners, um, uh, maybe some dancers don't like to, to go to Zydeco and vice versa, some Zydeco dancers don't like to dance to Cajun music. What do you think when you hear folks say, look, Zydeco is black, Cajun is white, and that's just the way it is, and you know. Uh, I, don't think that, I don't think you can uh, divide music that easily. It's, it's all too, uh, too closely related. It all comes from the same place. One of the most important influences in both Lorman's and Garnier's careers was the legendary Creole fiddler Canray Fontenot. I learned something that you can only get from, from a true master, and what he stood for, for me and, and uh, for Ward, is like what happened to Louisiana when, uh, they, when, the oil, when the oil came in in the early part of this century. It lost it lost something. It just lost something. And when we lost him, we lost the old men. He played whatever made people dance. And he said, Chile reminds me of my old man. We played what made people move. very, 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 very critical about music. Mark Savoy is both a prominent musician in his own right and the person who builds Ward Lorman's accordions. We sat down and we heard this band playing, and I'm telling you, it was like listening to uh, one of the 78s from the past or something, you know, and I, I said, wow. <laughs> For Louisiana's Cajuns, the rediscovery of their music has been a source of considerable pride. It wasn't always that way. At first I felt uh, like it was not cool to speak French, so I didn't, I didn't let people know that I spoke French until much later, like when I was 15, 16 years old. Were you ashamed? Yeah, Cajuns were not looked upon in a good light at all. Uh, the Cajun people, you know, you can uh, punish them, which our, my parents were punished and whipped on the school ground for speaking French. You can forbid them from uh, speaking French, or you can forbid them from pursuing this uh, religion, or you can forbid them from doing just about anything, and they'll just continue doing it whether you forbid it or not. <laughs> They may be traditional, but that doesn't mean it won't flout convention. Pianos are not normally part of the Cajun sound, but David Egan doesn't let that stop him. We're expanding the parameters, mixing up a lot of things, and we have plenty of younger kids coming along, and they are really getting their teeth into it, prodigies. And I think it's going to be fun to sit back and see what they do with it. At informal gatherings of friends and family of all ages, a musical tradition is kept alive. There's never been a written tradition to Cajun music at all. It's always been orally passed on. And uh, um, I, I, I just like to see kids playing Cajun music. And even under the crackle of a summer thunderstorm, the old Cajun joie de vie can't be stopped. Shoo -lack, shoo -lack, shoo -lack, 